Well, gosh, all hemlock. About a week ago, Sarah Ann Martin was took down with a fever, and Nancy had to go down and take care on her. She being a widow woman, and I had to stay home and keep house. Well, Cindy Lawson come over to go down with Nancy and left her boy with me to take care on. And Nancy said to me, now, Joshua, the bread is sought to rise, the churning is all ready to do, and don't let the soft soap bile over, and keep your eye on the smokehouse, and don't let it catch fire, and I guess maybe the speckin' hen will hatch today, and I wouldn't wonder if the bees wouldn't swarm, and Joshua, don't you let Cindy's boy fall in the well nor nothing. <laughs> Gosh, I had a few things to do besides taking care of Cindy's boy, and that boy could ask more fool questions. He said to me, Uncle Joyce, where does the wind come from? Well, I told him some of it come from Ohio, and most of it come from Nebraska. He said, well, Uncle Joyce, what's Nebraska? I told him it was a state, and he said, well, Uncle Joyce, what's a state? <laughs> well, I took off my coat and vest and pinned one of Nancy's aprons on me, and I hadn't took more than a dozen steps when I tripped and fell down over that darn apron, and my head hit on the stove, made my nose bleed, and knocked down the stove pipe, and the soot went all over the bread, and just as I was getting things straightened out, that boy said to me, Uncle Joyce, does the Lord know everything? I told him I calculated as how the Lord did. He said, well, then, the Lord knows I'm hungry, don't he? <laughs> well, I give him some bread and butter and put apple sass on it, and I started in to do the churning. Well, I churned quite a spell, and I looked in the churn to see if the butter was coming, and my spectacles fell off, and the churn dasher broke them, and... While I was trying to fish him out, my plug of tobacco fell in the churn and spiled the cream. Well, I wouldn't have cared, but I didn't have any more tobacco handy. <laughs> Just then I heard that boy say, Uncle Joyce, is there a bug in it? I looked around, and darn if he didn't have my watch open and was poking in it with a hairpin. Well, I took it away from him, and he started a squalling so you could hear him a mile and a half. Well, I gave him some maple sugar to keep him quiet, and just then the soft soap biled over, and while I was trying to sot it off the stove, it upsot and run all over the kitchen floor, and some of it run through a hole in my boot, and I had to go out and stick my foot in the rainwater barrel. <laughs> well, I heard that boy yell when I got into the house, Darnaby didn't have his finger caught in the mouse trap, and I got it out and tied a rag around it, and he said, Uncle Joyce, it's a leaking, ain't it? <laughs> well, I heard a noise out in the hen house, and I went out there, and the speckled hen had a lot of little chickens, and the cat was trying to get them. Well, I started to chase that cat, and the clothesline caught me under the chin. I turned about four somersets, and up down in the middle of a flower bed. <laughs> I heard that boy say, Uncle Joyce, a bee bit me. I looked around, and darn of them bees hadn't swarmed, and while I was trying to hive them, they got all over me, and while I was fighting them off, that boy fell into the wash tub, and the smokehouse caught fire, and the fire department turned out, and when I come to... Cindy said I'd been abusing her boy, and Nancy said a woman can't leave home a minute. Men are such helpless critters. <laughs>